Hi, I'm Steve Orsmo with Springfield Armory. What I want to show you all today is how to disassemble, clean, lubricate, and reassemble your Saint rifle. Okay, when I'm field stripping any firearm, whether it's a rifle or handgun, first thing I want to do is I want to ensure that the gun is empty. So with the Saint rifle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back on the charging handle to pull the bolt carrier group all the way to the rear, and I'm going to push down here on the bolt catch to lock the bolt to the rear, okay? Push my charging handle back and lock it into place in the upper receiver. I'm going to physically and visually check to make sure there's no ammunition or magazine into the gun, okay? So from there, I can either push the bolt release and let the bolt go forward, okay, which is completely fine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on the takedown pins. So I'm going to push this rear one and I'm going to push the forward one. Flip the rifle over, okay, and then I'll pull with my fingers. Pull that one out. There's a stop in it, so it's not going to come all the way out. And the same thing with the, the front pin. Okay. Some people refer to this as a pivot pin and this is a takedown pin, but I refer to both of them as a takedown pin because I'm going to separate the upper and the lower receiver. Okay. Typically with AR-15 rifle type rifles, um, such as the Saint, the lower receiver doesn't get a lot of fouling inside of it. All I need to do is I need to wipe off the hammer. Okay. And if I do see any fouling inside there, I will use a Q-tip that gets in there nice to remove any of that fouling inside there. But like in the case of this, and, and most of the time, you don't get a lot of fouling in there unless the gun's been dropped in the dirt or you've been shooting it with a suppressor on it. Otherwise, they stay relatively clean. So in this case, I'll wipe off any oil or any residue such as that. One thing that I will clean from time to time, about every third or fourth time I will clean the gun is I will clean the buffer and buffer spring. Uh, I'll take those out and I'll clean those. People will ask, well, how do I get that pin down? Well, one of the things I will use, you can use like a punch or um, a cleaning rod. Uh, I, you can use a cleaning brush. Just push down on that takedown pin and your buffer will pop out a little bit. From there, I can just go ahead and grab the buffer and pull the spring out, okay? And again, in this case, the, the, the buffer and the spring are actually pretty clean, all right? Um, so from there, and if I need to, if this buffer tube or your receiver extension is gets fouled up inside there, just run a... a paper towel or a rag through there, but make sure you leave enough of it so you can pull it out, okay? Um, but honestly, from the lower receiver's perspective, that's about as much as I clean it, okay? Putting this back in, as I put the buffer back in, I'm sorry, the buffer spring, okay? And I just push the buffer all the way in past that pin and it moves out of the way itself and the buffer's ready to go. So go ahead, now guys, you're basically done with the lower receiver. From here, I just flip the gun upside down. The upper, this is your upper receiver, okay? I'll pull back on my charging handle to release the bolt carrier group, okay? And I'll take out the charging handle. Now you'll notice there's two little wings or tabs on this charging handle. There's corresponding cutouts inside your upper receiver where those tabs have to go down into to get it into the, the correct position, okay? So make sure you're aware of that. Um, consult your owner's manual if you have any questions about that, okay? So there, the gun is most of the way field strip. I've got my upper receiver, I've got my lower receiver, which I'm essentially done with, okay? Um, I've got my charging handle and I've got my bolt carrier group, okay? The bolt carrier group does require disassembly to clean it, but from here, it's pretty simple. First thing I wanna do is, you'll notice you have what they call a firing pin retaining pin right here. Now, some people will have a challenge getting that thing out. If you use just a small punch, you can punch this side of it just to get it started, and then usually you can grab onto it with something, okay, and pull that firing pin retaining pin out. In this case, I might wanna use, um, I might need a punch. I can even grab it with my fingernails like I did to get it out, okay? So from there, that allows me to get the firing pin out. So I'm gonna turn this, tap that, to get that firing pin to come all the way out. There's my firing pin. So from there, I push the, the bolt. This is actual bolt, this is the carrier. I take my cam pin and I have to rotate my cam pin 90 degrees. And then I'm able to get that cam pin out, okay? It comes out, that allows me to pull my bolt out, all right? So from there, the gun is completely field stripped for cleaning. The first thing I do is I'm gonna work on my bolt carrier, bolt, the, all these parts, I'm gonna clean that now. So what I wanna do is you're gonna get quite a bit of carbon buildup down inside here. This is your gas key or your carrier key. And what happens is it aligns with your gas tube, which is inside the upper receiver. It blows gas down in here, which causes the gun to function. That makes the gun unlock and function when it's been fired. So, but what you do get down in here is you'll do, you will get some carbon buildup in there and it's really pretty difficult to get out. 
You don't necessarily have to get it all out, but do your best to get some of it out. There's some copper or there's some carbon uh, killers on the market. There's some uh, solvents that will remove some of that carbon buildup. There's actually some uh, metal scrapers that some um, some companies are making, some aftermarket companies are making that will get some of that carbon out of there. I have found in my experience that as long as I get some of it out, it, 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 it builds up to a certain point and it, and it stopped because I've never had a gun not function because of too much carbon buildup inside of there. Okay. So I want to get a brush of some kind down inside here, whether I use a patch or a um, nylon brush that can clean inside there. Okay. However you want it, whatever technique you happen to use. In this case, I'm going to use this brush on the small end of the M16 brush, take a patch and I'm just going to clean it out the best I can. Next thing I want to do is I want to get the carbon buildup off of the bolt. Now, if you'll notice, the bolt goes in this way, hence the carbon buildup here. Now, depending on how much you shoot it, you're gonna have more or less of this carbon buildup in here. It's something that occurs that you cannot avoid, okay? So, one of the things I like to use for that is these, um, if you go to the grocery store, the Scotch-Brite pad, it's the green pad that you can buy in the, in the household items. And those work really good for getting that carbon buildup off of there. Okay. All right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is if I have, if I shot the gun a bunch, there's going to be some fouling all over the bolt. Good time to use your M16 brush to clean the lock and lugs. Okay. Clean the breech face. Okay. Face of the bolt. All right. I'll take some Q-tips and I'll get any of that loosened up residue off of there. Products such as gun scrubber or any of the powder blast that, that, that will blow off that stuff in that chemical. Um, guys, I would suggest you use it in the garage or outside because your wife's not gonna like the smell of it. But that being said, that's a good item to use to spray off a bunch of that residue that you can't get off, okay? For normal field stripping, I'm not gonna take the extractor out, okay? Um, refer to your uh, owner's manual and as far as it talks about how to get your extractor out. But normal cleaning, I don't. If I need to, I'll use a uh, Q-tip to get underneath the hook or grab a, a tool, to, a pick of some kind to get any fouling out of that. But not, under normal circumstances, I don't need to take the extractor out on, on normal routine field stripping, okay? Um, once the bolt's clean, you'll see that you have some gas rings right here. I was always taught when you put the gun back together, make sure that those rings are, that gap is staggered. The old Marine part of me tells me, stagger those things the best you can. So they'll move around in there. You can stagger those, those gaps and you're set. Um, using your rags or your patches, clean off your cam pin. Just wipe off any excess and any, uh, any dirt and grime. Same thing with your firing pin retaining pin. Okay. So those parts are basically clean. And when you pull your firing pin out, you'll notice it'll probably be dirty. Just take your rag and wipe off any, any, uh, fouling. Okay. And you're basically done with that. Now, your charging handle. Again, the charging handle doesn't get that dirty, but if you take a rag, wipe off the outside. I usually take to take a Q-tip and I'll run it on the inside. Now, this will get a little bit dirty, but Q-tips once or twice through there and you're set, it's done. Now, you're gonna tack your upper receiver. Now, this is where the barrel is, okay? And your gas tube extends out about an inch and a half and that's what corresponds with your carrier key, okay? To make the gun function. You're gonna get some fouling down in this area. It's just unavoidable with this design of a gun. Okay, and right here you'll notice you'll have what they call locking lugs, okay? That's where your barrel goes in and, and locks as the gun fires. You need to clean out any residue in there. There are aftermarket things called bore guides, which I highly suggest. I use those anytime I'm, I'm using my Saint rifle. They're not necessary, but they make it the, the cleaning of the barrel a little bit easier, okay? Otherwise, I have to take my brush, okay, and line it all the way up through the upper receiver and line it up with that the barrel and the locking lugs, and then I'll take a brass brush or a nylon brush such as I have here, and I'll run it through the barrel about 10 or 15 times to loosen up any of that fouling that's inside there, okay? From there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the brush off my cleaning rod, I'm gonna put a, a jag or a patch puller, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, some people like the push type jags. Um, most gun cleaning kits come with a little patch puller like this, and there I will put a patch on my patch puller, or jag, and I'll put a little bit of solvent on it, okay? Put my patch in the barrel that has the uh, solvent on it, run that through there, you know, three or four times, okay? All right, and then I'll do that wet patch, dry patch, wet patch, dry patch until the gun and the patches come out clean, okay? Since I just put solvent on there, I'm gonna run a dry patch through there to get any excess solvent out. 
And again, you may go through eight or 10 or 15 or 20 patches in depending on how dirty the, the barrel is, okay? Um, this gun has very few rounds here and you can see how dirty that comes out. But so from there, I've cleaned the barrel. Um, what I wanna do now is, is clean those locking lugs and the area down by that gas tube, okay? Q-tips are about the best thing I've found for this. There's some specialty aftermarket tools to make cleaning that locking lug a little bit easier, but they're not necessary. Like I said, it does make it easy, but you can get it, most of that stuff out of there um, with a Q-tip, okay? Um, and I'll clean those locking lugs. You'll also notice right inside there, there's feed ramps, okay? Make sure those are clean with that, those Q-tips as well. And I'll get Q-tips down around the gas tube because you're gonna have a lot of carbon buildup inside there. Okay, and I'll just stick them in and, and twist them around, move them around, try to get as best I can to get all that residue out of there, okay? And those of you that have shot this gun very much, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So using your Q-tips to get in there and clean the uh, the fouling out of there and you're set, all right? Um, and for the most part, that's about it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna reassemble the bolt carrier group. So when these parts are all together, okay, and assembled together, they're called the bolt carrier group, okay? This is my bolt, this is the carrier, okay? And it all put together again, they're called the bolt carrier group. So what you're gonna do is I like to put a nice bead of oil, okay, inside the bolt carrier group where the bolt's gonna go. I also will take and I will put a bead of oil right there on that little raised ring that goes all the way around the bolt. Okay, I'll install that. Now, here's the tricky part. This is where some people have some problems. The cam pin will only go in one direction. If I show you on the bolt, there's a hole going through it. This cam pin goes through there just like that, all right? Well, if you'll notice, it doesn't go in that way. So people will say, well, how do I know? I'm gonna show you, okay? One of the things you can do is, if you don't get it in right and it doesn't go in, just rotate the bolt, you know, um, 180 degrees and you're in money. Now, with the camping, I put an excessive amount of oil on it, okay? Because it's moving inside there and it's sliding back and forth. Okay, now when you put it in to clear the gas key, okay, you've got a, it's a rectangular shaped little top part of that cam pin. You've got to put it in that way. Now, when you get it in, okay, you make sure you want to rotate it that 90 degrees. Either way is fine. You can turn it that way or the other way. Because what happens is there's a hole in that cam pin. That's where your firing pin goes. Now, one of the things I was taught years ago, just hold my hand like this and hold the bolt carrier like that and drop my firing pin in and it usually bounce right in. Now, it's very important when you get your firing pin in and it's sitting like that, you want to push it all the way down until it stops, okay? And then install your firing pin retaining pin. Now, it's critically important that you push down and you make sure that that firing pin is all the way down because if you install the firing pin retaining pin in front of the firing pin, the gun's not gonna fire, okay? So um, pay attention to that, okay? So from there, I've reassembled the bolt carrier group. Now, to get the bolt carrier assembled back into the upper receiver and the rifle, you wanna pull the bolt forward, okay? Just like that and it's gonna stop. What that does, if you'll notice right here, it moves that cam pin forward and under the gas key, okay? Now from there, you know, you'll notice these high spots on your bolt carrier. That's the actual part that's moving and touching the inside of your upper receiver. So you don't necessarily need to over lubricate this part. You don't need to have lube down here. You don't need lube all over this thing because it's not making any kind of contact inside the upper receiver. I can just put them on those high spots right there. And if you need be, you put a little bit of more oil on your bolt and you're fine, okay? Now, I'll set that aside and I'll take my charging handle. I'll put a little bit of, little bead of oil on there and then I'll just rub it in with my finger, okay? Because it's actually moving around inside that upper receiver as well, okay? Take my upper receiver and if you remember, I mentioned there's those two little tabs right there Okay, have to match up with the corresponding slots inside the upper receiver and then you heard it pop down and then I slide it about halfway in, okay? Now, with the bolt carrier group, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gas key into that cutout, that recessed area inside my charging handle and then I just slide and slowly install the carrier, okay, the, the bolt carrier group, push it all the way in and then you'll hear the charging handle lock into place. Okay, so from there, all I need to do is to go ahead and install the upper receiver onto the lower receiver, okay? Really, no necessary, not necessarily put any lubrication in here. Um, if you feel the need, about the only place I ever do is inside those springs on my hammer, okay? I'll put a little drop oil on there, all right? And that's about it. 
ensure that your takedown pins are still out. If they get pushed in, you're not gonna be able to get that upper receiver into that groove and that pin and lock it into place, okay? So make sure they're still out. Sometimes when you lay it down, it'll get pushed back in. So pay attention to that. Now, to install the upper receiver onto the lower receiver, I just take the lower and guide it in and mark, watch those posts that stick out of the upper receiver. You're gonna have to pull it back just a tiny bit, okay? Because there's a little spring tension right there and push down on your takedown pins and the gun is back assembled and you're ready to rock. So there you have it. I've disassembled, cleaned, lubricate it and reassemble your stain rifle. To find out more information about detailed cleanings, consult your owner's manual, and also you can check out springfield-armory.com.